Event registration happens through Cub Connect. Any person with access to the event process in their organization's page can submit an event. Events must be registered two weeks in advance of the anticipated event date. We do encourage the person who is in charge of the event to be the one that submits an event. Often we ask questions and it is easiest to have direct communication with the event coordinator. The event submission process is split into two parts. The first part, which will be covered in this video, has items that are built into the Cub Connect system and we at UCA do not have the ability to edit them. To begin the event submission process, we will go into the organization we want the event created through. On this page, if we have administrative privileges in Cub Connect, we will have the Manage Organization option. We'll click on that to get into the organization's portal. If you don't see this option, you should contact the president or advisor of your organization to gain access. From here, you'll open the left menu and choose events. On the events page, you can see all past events that have been registered and click on the create event button to begin the process. As said before, there are parts of the event submission process that are built into Cub Connect, but they're some of the most important parts of how the event is presented to the public or UCA community. To begin, you'll input the event title, choose a theme for the event and provide a description. For this description, you should enter what you'd like someone who's viewing your event to read. Make this part appealing to those who might want to come to the event. In the additional co-host spot, please list other RSOs, offices or departments or housing organizations that you're partnering with. The date, time and location options are listed next. The date always defaults to the current day and the time is usually a few hours out from the current time that the submission is being started. Make sure to review this, especially if you had to stop the submission in the middle and are coming back to it as some information might have changed. The location option gives you a couple ways to indicate where your event will take place. You can simply put the location or address or you can choose to display a map and drop an exact pin on the location. If you're choosing an online location, the process allows you to put in a link to a Zoom or something similar and some instructions. A great thing you can do here is add another date if this is a recurring event. Most of the time we see these come for approval for a weekly meeting or a once a month event throughout the semester. The final item on this page is the visibility of the event. There are four visibility options. Public visibility is viewable to anyone whether they're logged into Cub Connect or not. Our public calendar is linked to the Student Life homepage for anyone to see. Student and staff option requires a person to be logged into the UCA Cub Connect through their single sign-on. Organization only is visible only to the persons that are in the hosting organization's roster. Finally, there's an invited users only option. This is the most infrequently used visibility status as it requires invitations be sent to each person whose calendar you'd like the event to appear on. Categories can be chosen for an event and this helps users search for opportunities on campus. One of the things we think is a unique feature is the ability to select perks for events. We've observed that students often are drawn to events that might have free food or giveaways and this is a great way to advertise that. The next page covers the RSVP functionality of the event submission. There are three options for RSVPs, anyone, invite only, or no one. For most events, the options will be anyone or no one. Leaving RSVP on anyone allows any person who can view the event to send an RSVP and it is the option that is most commonly chosen because it's the default. An invite only event might be an induction ceremony, banquet, interest meeting only targeting specific groups or people, or something of that sort that requires an RSVP to get more accurate anticipated numbers. This also requires invitations be sent to anticipated attendees to get their RSVP. The last option is no one. We have found that when it comes to an event admittance, students who will have, will have RSVP'd to an event and they will tell a person taking attendance at the door that their attendance has already been tracked when they've only submitted an RSVP. If you're holding an event that requires more accurate attendance information, such as a large open social event, the RSVP, RSVP setting should be set to no one to ensure each attendee is tracked in accurately. The rest of the page allows questions to be added to the RSVP. This tool is very useful if you're trying to gather dietary restrictions, shirt sizes, guest names, or other information for your events. The RSVP information can be exported into a spreadsheet document after the event has been approved. The third page is about post-event feedback. If you're holding an event that you'd like to get some assessment data from, you can build a questionnaire for after the event. 
You can choose if you want to send it immediately at the reported end of the event or if you'd like to send it later via a button on the Manage Event page. The final page on the Cub Connect Design pages is a photo upload. This photo will become the cover photo for your event. If this is an annual event, you might choose a fun picture from previous years. If you choose to leave it blank, Cub Connect has some stock photos that it uses based on the title of your event. This concludes part one of the event submission process training. Please go to part two to learn about the social and non-social processes on the second half of the event submission process.